Hey everyone, my name is Michael. I lead developer advocacy at Xano. And today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial of how to connect Xano to Flutterflow. We'll show you how to connect a couple API calls uh, in order to display a simple list and then take that list to go to uh, a single page view. So let's jump into it. Now, if you haven't checked out Flutterflow just yet, uh, definitely give it a go. It's a really uh, powerful front end builder you can even extend it with custom code so it also plays in this low code world. And you can bring your own backend such as Xano and connect your APIs to it like we'll go ahead and do today. Okay. All right, so into our actual Flutterflow project. Now I started with a completely blank project today and I'll show you how you can start to uh, set up an API called a Xano and start to actually populate your Flutterflow front end with your Xano data. So. Um, over here on the left side in Flutterflow, we can find there's this API call section. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on here. And we can start to define different API calls. If I go ahead in here and add, they even have a, a nice little open API or swagger import if you want to bring in all your API documentation at once. But we're just going to set up a couple individual calls today. So you can see we can even organize things into group. I'm just going to create API call for now. And you can see we can start to uh, define whatever we're going to call from Xano. So let's jump over to our Xano project. And in my workspace here, uh, set up something very simple. I just have a database with uh, some different places in here. So uh, we're gonna call this table, you know, it's just a, a list of five different places here with an image. We'll display that and then we'll actually click on one of these places and show a, a complete view, a single page view of one of these things. So over to our Xano API and into our API group here. You can see this places endpoint is what we're going to first want to uh, use. So you can see if I run this, we get all our places back. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my endpoint URL right here in Xano, jump back into our Flutterflow project and we'll call this, um, we'll call this get places will be our API call name. And I'm just gonna paste in that URL uh, right now, no authentication, no query parameters. So what we can do is we can go to response and test here. And when we do this, we hit test API call and we're able to get a successful call in Flutterflow. Uh, but now when we want to actually use data from one of these API calls, we actually need to select certain JSON paths that we want to be available in our Flutterflow front end builder, right? So I can go ahead here to this recommended and you can see it pulls all this schema and what we care about here. So we can actually go ahead and, and select it here on the right side. So ID is going to be important because we're going to want to pass that to get our single page view, uh, name, location. Uh, we don't need everything in image right now. We just need the URL. We'll use that to actually display the image and that should be all we need for now. So if we go over to selected, we actually need to give uh, some of these names here. So we can say ID is ID, name, name, location, and then we'll have URL here. And you can see this is all checked for a list because we're getting a list of all of those places. So I can go ahead now and say add call and make sure that's saved. And great, we're ready to next add our get single place API call. So let's go back to Xano here. And you can see I have this get places, which gets a just a single record, right? So you can see if I just run this in Xano, we do one, we get one place back. So let's copy this endpoint URL, come back to Flutterflow. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a new API call. And we'll just call this single place and put in my API URL. Now, uh, one thing to note about Flutterflow is uh, instead of curly brackets here, they actually like to use these flat brackets for variables. So let's go ahead and just replace that in the end where it says places ID. And in variables here, we can go ahead and uh, define actually this places ID. And the type here is going to be an integer in this case. Uh, we could set a default value if we want to, but not necessary just yet. Let's go to uh, response and test. And here you can see for variables, I actually have a place to uh, put in a value that I want to actually test this out. So if I hit test API call, 
You can see once again, we get a su successful response here on the right side. And just like we did with the uh, list of places, we wanna go ahead to actually select what schema we care about. So you can see here, this is actually, none, nothing is defaulted checked as is a list because we're just getting a single object back. So I'm gonna select ID, name, location, and our image URL again. So that's all we're going to use for uh, this video today. And let's go ahead and just name these things again. So we have ID, name, location, and URL. Great, so we can go ahead and add this call. And we have our two APIs we're going to work with. So now let's actually go about actually building this and populating this data in Flutterflow. Okay, so now in the UI builder, let's go ahead and start to populate some components for this list and also make the API call to populate it. So Flutterflow will uh, default in a blank app with a, a column here just on this home page that we'll use. Let me go ahead uh, and just remove that. And I'm going to use, you can definitely use that column view, but I'm going to use this uh, list view here. And I'm going to put a card down. Let's grab uh, an image. And that image is a little big, but once we drag text in here as well, we should be able to uh, choose how we want to wrap things. So we can wrap things, stack them like in a column, wrap in a row or have them actually, I guess, stacked, right? So I'm gonna wrap in a row here. And maybe there's just a little bit of uh, formatting to do here. Let's make this image a little bit smaller. We'll say 100 and maybe just 50. Okay, great, we'll get something small like that. There's a whole lot of control in Flutterflow that you can do um, with padding and make things very pretty. Uh, me coming from the back end, I care more about the data, so let's get things rocking here. So if I actually select this whole list view here, I can go over here on the right side and add a back end query. And when I do that, there's this drop down and it's defaulted to unset, but I can go ahead and choose an API call. And then the group or call name that I want is going to be that get places. This is going to be our list. And that's all I need for now. I can hit confirm. And so once I do that, right next to the backend query is generate dynamic children. And this will actually uh, allow us to create sort of this repeating list or repeating group uh, that you're so familiar seeing in many uh, front end builders. So here our variable name, we'll just call this um, list of places. And then the value here, let's go ahead and hit this little editor here and we'll say get places response. And JSON body is our API response, available options, JSON path, we want that. Path name, um, custom, you can see here is what we defined, but since we're gonna be working with multiple pieces from that response, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this dollar sign and this will just grab that entire JSON response uh, for me to be able to start to pull different components to populate uh, this list, this card that I'm creating. So I'll hit confirm here and then hit confirm one more time. And then it'll, we'll get this message. This widget will now generate its children dynamically from this specified variable. Simply edit the first child in the list view and set how everything in the child should look. So very easy to do. I'll hit OK. You can see now that my view, it looks a little bit different. We have uh, this list populating here. So now if I come over to the different components in this card, like let's first click this image here. And you can see here in the path, there's this default uh, pixum.photos URL. But if I hit this sort of orange list icon here, I can go ahead and now dynamically populate this. And this time I want list of places item. Remember that's the uh, repeating children variable that we created. So I'll go ahead and select that. Available options here, we wanna make sure we have JSON path. And now here on that JSON path, we wanna say dot image dot URL. Remember, cause that is the actual path in my Xano API response. It's the image field and then nested in there is the URL. So that will take uh, the image right there. I'll go ahead and hit confirm. And then the text here, let's go ahead and select this. And just like we did with URL, we'll click this thing to uh, set from a variable. We'll do list of places item. We'll select our JSON path. And here we'll go ahead and say dot name. So it's in that tyrant response, go find uh, the name and populate this list. So we'll go ahead and hit confirm. 
And let's go ahead and take a moment and see what this actually uh, looks like. And if you go to the top right here, you can run your app in test mode. I'm gonna go ahead and select this. It's gonna take a couple minutes to compile. So I'll go ahead and skip the video ahead so you can see what this live data looks like. So Flutterflow finished compiling my test mode. And if this is your first look at it, it, it might take a couple minutes, but it gives you this really nice interface to actually debug with and see what things are starting to look like. So here is my list of places. This is all coming from the Xano database, the image uh, and the name of the place. And you can see uh, we even have these different options to display, right? If we want to uh, see what it would look like on the web, we can choose different type of uh, displays. Like let's say this is what it would look like on this MacBook Pro, certain amount of inches, iPad, and our, uh, our mobile app, of course. So pretty cool that you can kind of bounce back and forth between that. You have a, a certain amount of time in this test mode before you need to um, recreate a new session. And then you can, as you build, instant reload uh, so you don't have to wait. But let's keep building because we have our list, but we want to be able to click on one of these items and go into our uh, single list view. So back into my Flutterflow uh, builder here. Let's go ahead and if I go over to um, my pages here and I want to add a new page, I'm going to create blank and I'll just call this um, single view here. Let's create this blank page. So let's first go ahead setting up that backend query on this single view. And I'm just gonna navigate over here for backend query. Let's make sure we have the entire page selected here because uh, we're gonna populate this as a single object or single place instead of doing that repeating list, right? So we'll do add backend query here. We'll do API call and this time the call is gonna be that single place. And remember this takes in that places ID, that variable that we set in that URL parameter. So let me go ahead and set additional variables here. And the parameter name is gonna be that places ID. And the value, well, the value we actually need to get from that list on our home page. So for now, I'm just gonna hard code one in and hit confirm, but we're gonna come back and make it dynamic. Let me hit confirm and let's go over to our home page here and into our UI builder. And when what we can do is we can actually select one of these rows and right here I can select my action flow editor. I'll add an action right here and we're going to say on tap and we have all these different options on what happens and we can also choose on double tap or on long press but I'm going to go ahead and select navigate to single view and what I can also do down here under parameters is I can now define uh, and add a parameter to add. So this is gonna jump me over to the page, the single view that I'm navigating to, and we can uh, name a parameter, and we'll just say place ID, just like that. Uh, and the type here will be an integer, and it is not a list. And default parameter value is optional. We don't need to set that. I can go ahead and hit confirm. Um, so now, if we go back into um, this card here, and in our actions, where it says parameters. Now I can go ahead, you can see this pass option wasn't here before. So now I can actually go ahead and pass this place ID. And so what's the value gonna be here? Well, when we go ahead and select this, list of places item, we can select our JSON path, and then we can select our um, item dot ID. And then we'll make sure to hit confirm. And so now when we click on one of these items in the list, it's gonna pass uh, that ID as a parameter to the next page. So let's navigate back to our single view page and let's edit that backend query and this places ID. And instead of one hard coded in, let's get this value. You can see now that place ID that we just set up is now able to be dynamic here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit confirm. And now let's make a page um, that has actually a single view. So what I might do here is instead of this default col column, I might go ahead and let's do a container here. Actually, I don't want a container. We'll just go ahead and drop an image first and foremost. Um, and now this image, we'll make sure that we are getting this from the 
single place response. And we can go ahead, instead of doing um, custom here, we can actually choose that URL. So that's another option, right? I can either do custom in dollar sign dot image dot URL, right? And put that path. But since we also define that when we set up the API call, I can also just go ahead and select URL there, right? So we'll go ahead and do it that, this, that way this time. Next, let me drag some text in here and let's wrap this in a column. And this text, we'll have this go ahead and be our name. I'll hit confirm there. And then let's do one more text under here in that this will actually be our location. So just another way to do this path name, remember? Uh, one with the dollar sign in that dot notation. And then otherwise, if we've already defined uh, what that data that we want is, that we can actually go ahead and um, select that right there. So, great. Now I'm ready to go back to my test mode and actually start a new session. So this will build again and with the updates. All right, and here we are in test mode. Here's my list that we've already seen before. Now you can see, look, I can I can tap or, or click on these. So let's click on Golden Gate Bridge and here's our one up view. And here we're populating that image the name and also we're getting the location on this single view page and maybe you want to uh, put a back button in your uh, interface here. I'm going to use the back of my browser to go back and you can see here too there's you know Mount Fuji, there's the next one, the pyramids. So you can see it's all dynamic. We're taking in the ID from whatever this uh, sort of parent item is on the list and passing it into that get single API endpoint that hits Xano and displays the data. So there you go. That's a very quick high level tutorial, an introductory one really on how to connect Xano in Flutterflow. But as you can see, uh, pretty intuitive in Flutterflow. So really easy to call your Xano API endpoint and start pumping your data uh, into your Flutterflow app. So hopefully you found this helpful. More videos to come on this topic and see you guys in the next video.